Hi again, it's Zeb. In the last video we looked at the Solo model. We talked about how there are really three components to the Solo model, the production function, the investment per worker function, and the depreciation function. And we talked about how savings uh, and investment and depreciation determine what's called the steady state capital per worker level. So in the steady state, that's where capital is being replaced at exactly the same rate that it is wearing out. So the capital stock per worker is not growing or shrinking. And that's where the economy is going to tend over time. And we said that output per worker depends on capital per worker. So once we've found the steady state capital per worker level, we've found the steady state output per worker level. So I'm going to quickly show you that again in a graph. And then we will talk about some of the things that will change the steady state capital per worker level and therefore change the steady state output. So to begin, we're going to start with a graph with capital per worker on the horizontal axis, output per worker on the vertical. So we've really got three different things here. The first is our production function. So the production function just says that output is some function of capital per worker. Next, we have our investment per worker function, which is just going to be some number s, which is going to be between 0 and 1, multiplied by output per worker. Right, that's investment per worker. And then finally, we have depreciation per worker, which is delta k over n. And our steady state is where these two meet up. Right, this is our steady state capital per worker level. This is where capital is neither rising nor falling. And the associated output level then is just going to be y over n star. Now the reason why this is a steady state, and I alluded to it uh, looking at the algebra in the last video, here we can show it graphically, is if you're at some other capital per worker level, let's say you're at, we'll call this k bar over n. If you're at k bar over n, notice investment per worker is higher than depreciation per worker. The green line here is higher than the red line by this amount. So capital is being replaced faster than it's wearing out. So for this reason, if you're replacing capital more quickly than it's wearing out, it must be the case that capital per worker is rising. Right? Whereas on the other hand, if we started out at this point, we'll call it k hat over n, right? at this point, now we can see that investment per worker right here is well below depreciation per worker by this amount. All right, so capital here is wearing out much faster than it's being replaced. And so for this reason, if capital is wearing out faster than it's being replaced, must be the case that capital per worker is shrinking. So the only point on this graph that is stable is that steady state capital per worker level. So that's why the economy is going to tend toward this point over time. And of course, at that point, output then is determined by it going up to the production function, coming over to find y star over n. So now what I want to do is think about how does this steady state change if we change uh, some of the different parameters in the model, some of the different variables like the saving rate or like uh, the depreciation rate or the production function. So let's start again. So here we've got k over n. Here's output per worker, y over n. Here is our production function. Next we need a, an investment per worker function. And finally, we've got a depreciation per worker function. All right, so in this case, our steady state can be found right here where the green and the uh, red lines intersect. So this is steady state capital. Now, let's suppose that we lower the saving rate, right? That our economy stops saving as much. Well, if it stops saving as much, then this savings, this investment per worker function is gonna get further away from the production function because we're saving a smaller percentage of our output. So it's going to get closer to the horizontal axis. So if we're saving less, 
we may have an alternate investment per worker function that looks like this dashed line. So we'll call this S prime F K over N. All right. So this is for a different saving rate where S prime is lower than S. So now you can see, hopefully, that we have a new steady state that's going to be right here now. So this is going to be, we'll call K prime over N. So if the saving rate in the economy falls, the steady state capital per worker level falls. And of course, we can also see what happens to output. Initially, output was at this point, Y over N. And now we go up to our production function and we come over and we see we have Y prime over N. So output per worker is falling too. So this tells us that a decrease in the saving rate is going to tend to mean less capital goes to each worker and therefore each worker is less productive, has less output. An increase in the saving rate means there's going to be more capital for each worker and that each worker is going to be more productive. So you might be inclined to say, well, shouldn't we just save 100% or shouldn't we just save uh, a really high rate? Well, high savings is great in the long run. Now, we've talked before about how it may not be uh, as good in the short run if you believe in the Keynesian paradox of thrift. But in the long run, sure, higher savings is a good thing, but of course you have to live. And if you're saving 90, 95, 100% of your income, for most of us, we're just not going to have enough to live on. So you have to strike the right balance between saving enough, you definitely want to make sure you do that, but not saving so much that you can't afford to live comfortably at, at a current point in time. So sure, a higher saving rate means higher output per worker, but of course, if all of your output is being saved, you might not have a very high standard of living. So keep that in mind. So now let's quickly erase, uh, let's erase, this might take a while. Let's erase this saving, or this, this lower investment function. Let's see what happens if we have a higher depreciation rate. Well, if we have a higher depreciation rate, that means that this delta gets bigger, All right? So if delta is getting bigger, then we would expect to see something like this, delta prime K over N. So now if we look for our new steady state, if you can see that, uh, it's a little hard to tell, it's somewhere right here. So this is gonna be K prime over N now. Let me erase this. So this is gonna be our new steady state capital per worker level and our new output per worker level is going to be Y prime over N. So we can see that an increase in the depreciation rate has similar effects to a decrease in the saving rate. Both means that less capital is gonna be accumulated in the steady state and that output is going to be lower. Of course, an increase in the saving rate has the same effect as a decrease in the de depreciation rate. Both mean that more capital is going to be accumulated in the steady state and that output per worker is going to be higher. The last thing that I want to do is look and see what happens when we have an increase in technology. So, so far we've looked to see what happens when we have an increase in the saving rate or a decrease in the saving rate, increases and decreases in the rate of depreciation. But now let's see what happens when we have increases in technological progress. So again, we'll start out, we've got capital per worker on the horizontal, output per worker on the vertical axis. Here is our production function. And of course we have a saving function, S of F, uh, K over N, and a depreciation rate. So delta K over N is our depreciation. So in this case, here is our steady state, right? This is the steady state K over N star. And this is gonna be our output rate, Y over N 
star. Now, if we have technological progress, that means that for a given amount of capital, the capital is better, essentially. So you can think about capital as being tools and equipment that are used to produce goods and services. So if technology is getting better, the capital that we have is better. So think about it this way. A worker that has a computer in 2017 is going to be much more productive with that computer than a worker who had a computer in 1997 because computers are just better today than they were in 1997. So even though it's the same number of computers possibly that a worker has, they can do more with it. So technology is just really saying that capital is getting better. So for a given amount of capital per worker, we can produce a higher output. So for instance, if we have technological progress, then we might expect to see a production function that looks like this, f prime of k over n. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful here because of course, if f prime of k over n, if, if output is rising, right, this means we have a higher production function, assuming that the saving rate does not change, now the investment per worker curve is going to rise as well to s prime of f of k over n. I kind of made a mess of that. Let me erase. So now we have a new investment per worker curve as well because the production function got higher. And so assuming that the saving rate remains unchanged, the investment per worker function is going to rise as well. So what happens to the steady state? Well, notice, assuming the depreciation is not changing, here is our new steady state capital per worker level. We'll call it K prime over N. What's happening to output per worker? Well, that rises to, we'll call it now Y prime over N. Now, this could happen again, right? This could happen, uh, say, every year, right? Every year you just have a new higher production function. And, of course, if that happens, then, of course, assuming that the saving rate remains unfixed, now we're also, or remains fixed, now we're also saving more. So maybe we get uh, S double prime, right? Of course, this could be uh, F double prime up here. And so now we get a new steady state again. So here's our new steady state. We'll call it K double prime over N. And now we have a new steady state output level y double prime over n. So it's really when you introduce technological progress in this model that you get persistent growth, right? Otherwise, if you don't have technological progress, you wind up in a steady state capital per worker level. And uh, of course, if you're in a steady state capital per worker level, then you're also in steady state output level per worker, which means output's not growing. Right? So in that case, the model really can't explain economic growth unless you start assuming that there's something exogenous that is growing. And in this case, that's going to be technology. So once we allow for exogenous technological growth, then we can start to get continued growth in output per worker. Right? As we see, as technology gets better, output per worker is rising and rising and rising. And of course, so is actual capital per worker as well. Now, of course, what isn't rising is kind of the effective level of capital per worker or the level of capital per effective worker, um, but that's a little more technical. Take my intermediate macro class and we will, we will touch on that. So thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.